third graders, welcome to Lesson 17, The Albertosaurus Mystery, Philip Curie's Hunt in the Badlands by T. V. Padma. The genre of this story is informational text. Remember, informational text gives us information about a topic. As we read, we want to be looking for headings that tell what each section is about, photographs and captions, and also we want to look for graphics such as maps that help explain the topic. Let's meet our author T.V. Padma. T.V. Padma, whose full name is Dr. Padma Venkatraman, has a lot of different interests. She loves science, math, nature, animals, space, the ocean, fossils, music, history, and poetry. Padma was born in India. She lives in Rhode Island now, where she enjoys canoeing, hiking, and horseback riding. As we read the story, we want to be thinking about our essential question. What can fossils tell us about the past? I spot our first heading, Searching Without a Map. Philip Curie was thirsty and tired. It was one of the hottest summer days of 1997. He and his team were looking for fossils that belonged to a dinosaur called Albertosaurus. Notice in parentheses, it's showing us how to pronounce that word so we can see how it's broken up into syllables. al ber to sor us Notice how the S-O-H-R is in capital letters. That tells us that we want to put the emphasis on that syllable. Also on this page, we have a photograph of what must be Philip Curie, and the caption on the photograph says, Many fossils are buried in Canada's badlands. More than 40 kinds of dinosaurs once lived there. Almost 90 years earlier, a famous fossil hunter named Barnum Brown had found a fossil field in western Canada's Badlands. Many Albertosaurs were buried in it. Philip was trying to find this place again. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Brown had not made a map or written down where he had found the fossils. Philip had few clues, just some notes and four old photos. We have another photograph on this page and the caption says, The badlands of Western Canada are full of hills. Philip didn't know which hill held Brown's fossils. Our next heading says, Discovery. The team was running out of water. Everyone except Philip went back to the camp. He continued on with the search. Sand flies and mosquitoes bit him. His head hurt. Philip had seen the remains of Brown's campsite earlier in the day. He knew the bones must be close. We have another photograph here and the caption says, Philip was trying to find the location of Albertosaurus fossils shown in Brown's old photograph. All alone, Philip climbed another hill. He stopped to hold up a photo. It looked just like the scene in front of him. He also could see that years ago, someone had dug into the rock there. Philip had found Brown's bone bed. And here we have the location where he was standing that he was able to compare to the old photograph and notice that it was the same area. The caption says Brown's photo was old, but Philip could see that the hills still looked the same. Holes or cuts in rocky hills are clues that someone might have dug there before. Our next heading, Barnum the Bone Hunter. Barnum Brown grew up in Kansas in the late 1800s. His family dug and sold coal. Young Barnum saw his first fossil when the family plow accidentally pulled one out of the ground. Brown went on to study fossils. He found that he liked digging up bones more than learning about them in class. So he left Columbia University to become a bone hunter for the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Brown was very good at finding fossils. Henry Fairfield Osborne, the head of the museum, joked that Brown could smell fossils. News writers called him Mr. Bones. 
We have a photograph of Barnum Brown, and the caption says, At the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, Brown helped put together the bones he found. Our next heading is Finding the First T-Rex. In the early 1900s, Brown dug up Tyrannosaurus rex, and there we have the pronunciation. See how it says Tyrannosaurus rex. Skeletons, first in Wyoming and later in Montana. These were the first T. rex skeletons ever found. For several years, Brown returned to Montana to dig for fossils. The bones he found there were often stuck in hard rock. He sometimes used dynamite to get them out. Then, in 1910, a terrible thing happened in Brown's life. His wife died. Brown tried to forget his sadness by hunting for more fossils. He rafted down Red Deer River Canyon in Canada. He camped in the area and looked for bones. Soon, Brown made a surprising discovery. We have the photographs and the caption says, in 1908, Brown found this T-Rex skeleton. It can be seen at the American Museum of Natural History. Our next heading is Finding Many Meat Eaters. In Canada, Brown found a place where many skeletons were buried. The skeletons belonged to Albertosaurus, a large meat-eating dinosaur. It was the first time anyone had found the bones of so many meat-eating dinosaurs in the same spot. Brown dug up some of the bones. He wrote only a few lines about his find, but didn't say how unusual it was. He didn't say why he thought so many individuals of the same species were together. He didn't tell what this discovery might mean. The Albertosaurus bones were sent to the museum and put away. There they lay in a basement storage room for many years with other dinosaur fossils. Our caption says, Albertosaurus got its name because the dinosaur's fossils were first found in Alberta, Canada. Our next heading is a fierce family. Albertosaurus was part of a family of fierce, meat-eating dinosaurs called Tyrannosaurids. Tyrannosaurus rex was also part of this family. Albertosaurus was smaller than Tyrannosaurus rex, but it was strong. Albertosaurus could see and smell well. It had many sharp teeth. Its huge, powerful jaws could crush bone. Like Tyrannosaurus rex, Albertosaurus lived and hunted alone. At least, that's what paleontologists thought. One man was about to change their thinking, however. He had some ideas about these ancient creatures. And down here at the bottom, we have a graphic image which shows us the difference in size between the Albertosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus rex. It says Tyrannosaurus rex was about 40 feet or 12 meters long. Albertosaurus was about 30 feet or 9 meters long. Our next heading is Philip Curie's question. In 1976, Philip Curie read what Brown wrote about the site full of Albertosaurs. At that time, most paleontologists thought Tyrannosaurids lived alone. If so, asked Philip, why were many of these animals buried together? Had they died together? Had they lived together? Some plant-eating dinosaurs had lived in groups. Maybe some of the meat-eaters that hunted them did too, thought Philip. After all, big groups of animals were hard to hunt alone. Maybe Albertosaurs hunted in packs. Philip was busy learning about many kinds of fossils and dinosaurs, however. He put his questions away for many years, just as Brown had put away his fossils. Our next caption says, Albertosaurus had about 70 teeth in its gigantic jaws. Our next heading, the bones in the basement. Philip thought about his questions again 20 years later. This time, however, something happened that made him hunt for answers. Philip came across some Albertosaurus bones in the basement of the American Museum of Natural History, the museum where Barnum Brown had worked. He could tell that the bones were from the Badlands in Canada where Brown had been searching for fossils. Philip saw that Brown had found at least nine Albertosaurs in one spot. He also saw that Brown had taken only a few bones from each animal. More bones were still buried in the Badlands, waiting to be discovered. 
We have a photograph and the caption on the side says the American Museum of Natural History where Brown's Albertosaurus fossils were stored. And then next to the photograph, we have a picture of a fossil and that caption reads, this fossil foot bone from an Albertosaurus was first discovered by Barnum Brown in Alberta, Canada, and then rediscovered by Philip Curie in New York City. Our next heading is the bones in the Badlands. Philip discovered more than bones at the museum. He also found Brown's field notes and a photo of Brown's site. Using these clues, Philip was able to find the bone bed. Here we have a picture of a map and the caption reads, place where Philip rediscovered the Albertosaurus fossil site, first found by Barnum Brown. Locating the spot was just the first step, however. Philip and his team worked for months to dig out each fossil. At least 22 Albertosaurs were buried in the rock. After the work was done, a new question came up. Did finding many fossils together prove that the animals had lived, died, and even hunted as a group? Here we have another photograph with the caption, Philip uncovering Albertosaurus bones in the Badlands. In the days of Barnum Brown, fossil hunters were not always able to keep good records. Today, paleontologists carefully record their finds with photographs, drawings, maps, and reports. Our next heading is what may have happened. Philip knew there could be other reasons for the fossils being together. Many of these ideas only brought up more questions, however. For example, the Albertosaurus could have died in quicksand, yet different kinds of dinosaurs could die in quicksand. Philip had found the fossils of only one kind, Albertosaurus. Maybe the Albertosaurus had gathered to lay eggs. If so, however, the fossils should have been about the same age and size, yet Philip had found small, young animals as well as large, old animals. Philip's hunt had ended, yet he needed more evidence to show that the meat eaters had lived together. And here at the bottom of the page, we have a reconstructed nest of fossilized dinosaur eggs. Scientists know that dinosaurs laid eggs because fossil eggs of several kinds of dinosaurs have been found. Our next heading, more groups of meat eaters. More evidence came when a paleontologist named Rodolfo Coria phoned Philip. Coria was calling from Argentina. He also had found a spot where a group of meat-eating dinosaurs was buried. So perhaps meat-eaters did live in groups after all. Scientists found more places with groups of meat-eating dinosaurs. These places were all over. Arizona, Montana, South Dakota, Utah, Mongolia, and Zimbabwe. Philip also looked carefully at the footprints of meat-eating dinosaurs in the Peace River Canyon of Canada. The footprints showed that meat-eating dinosaurs may have traveled together. We have a photograph here and it says, Rodolfo Coria uncovers teeth on a huge dinosaur jawbone. Our last heading, digging deeper. Did some meat-eating dinosaurs spend time living and hunting together? Scientists still aren't sure. They can only make smart guesses based on the fossils they have found. Other questions are still unanswered as well. Why did the Albertosaurs at Brown's site die? What killed so many animals at one time? A big storm? A forest fire? Philip Curie says that a paleontologist is like a detective. The mysterious death happened millions of years ago. No one saw it. Using clues, the scientist tries to tell what happened, how, and why. As long as there are fossils waiting to be found, the investigation continues. And our caption here says, by studying fossils, experts can create models like this life-size Albertosaurus. I hope you enjoyed this informational text, The Albertosaurus Mystery, and I will see you next time. Bye.